Hello, everyone. Sandra here with another Rambler for you. And today I want to talk about kind of some interlinking subjects. Uh, the first one is projection, and the second one is assumptions. So these are very interrelated. And what I'm really talking about is how we view other people. Uh, and it kind of is, I guess, how we inform the way that we kind of interact or think about others. So these are kind of um, very intertwined. And so uh, I'm going to start by kind of defining what I'm talking about a little bit here. So the, there's a couple of ways that we can kind of project onto others. But usually what's happening is we're taking kind of ourselves and we're taking a projection of ourselves and placing it on them to fill in gaps. You can kind of think of this in some regards as um, kind of like painting over somebody with our own life experiences, our own feelings, preferences, thoughts, etc. Uh, and then the other one is assumptions, the other uh, concept that I want to talk about. And assumptions are, well, I mean, it's where we assume things. It's where we try to come up with what we think is going on or, or is happening or, yeah, what we, th what we think is going on or what we think is happening. And we use those conclusions that we've reached. Uh, sometimes they're best guesses or, or whatever. But we use those conclusions, those assumptions to kind of inform our thoughts and opinions. So these kind of often work together where we use a combination of projection and assumption to try to figure out what we think is going on with somebody else. Uh, this tends to be very dangerous because it's often full of false information that we've derived from nowhere in particular or it ignores the reality of who the other person is. So I wanted to talk a little bit about these topics and some of the consequences of them uh, and some of the dangers of them. And what what I'm trying to get at here and what I'm trying to encourage is both of these things can be very insidious. Projection is, is very insidious. Assumptions are very insidious. We can, it's natural, a natural human instinct to make use of them, to try to inform our worldview, our understanding of things. We're doing the best that we can, but unfortunately we have as human beings, and I'm certainly not, not subject to this. Like this is something that I struggle with myself we tend to want to fill in the gaps rather than saying, I don't know, or realizing that we don't know. We tend to try to figure out what the answer is or what the, the no is. We, we like to try to know, right, uh, rather than admit unknown information. And when we're dealing with other people, this is especially where we can reach a lot of problems. There's a couple of ways that this can particularly come out. And a lot of these actually kind of go back into the fear episode that I did at the start of the year of 2018, because what happens with some of this stuff is that we see somebody's behavior, okay, we see them do something, and then we make assumptions about their motivations, or, and this is usually kind of the other side of that, that same similar coin, or that same coin, we say, if I were doing thing X that person did, what would lead me to do it, right? So this is projecting. So assumptions are usually based on almost like stereotypes or sort of what is um, what is presented to us for the reason why somebody would do something. And we kind of assume that that is the reason that somebody is doing it. And then projection is kind of, instead of using a general idea, it's using, if I were doing that, why would I do it? So there's some very simple examples that kind of immediately come to mind. For example, what sort of food would somebody like? Or um, what what does somebody want to eat? Or things like that, where it's like, well, I don't like this kind of food, so I don't understand why somebody else would. This, is, this kind of goes in with it. Or like, because I don't like this thing, I kind of assume this other person isn't, or that this other person is coming from the main, same mindset I do. Uh, because we're all informed by our own life experiences. I'm I'm highly reminded of um, an internet forum that I was reading once, where somebody was trying to explain their point of view, and everybody else was like, "We disagree," and they're like, "But explain my point of view again," and everybody's like, "No, no, no, we understood you. We just don't agree." And this is kind of going into the same space, right? Where there's the assumption that if people are going to think the same way as you do, that if they have all the same information you have, then they would agree with you. Uh, and this, I think, is a cause for a lot of conflict because, it, the, again, there's woven in the assumption that other people think the same way. Um, so you can see some of this with raunchy comedies, for example, 
where you say, oh, the person must be some sort of pervert for liking this thing. And maybe it's the comedy part that they're really drawn to. And the assumption or the projection, right, is reading into the motives the wrong way. Or you could have a game that somebody likes playing. For example, maybe they like playing a Grand Theft Auto game, but what they really like from it is the driving part. And you can make all sorts of assumptions about what it is they like, especially if you have poor information. So remember, keep in mind that projection, and, and I think that this is kind of almost my core point here. Projections and assumptions are things that we do to fill in gaps in our information. So when we don't know something, we take what we do know and we try to fill in the holes with that. So if we don't know what's going on inside somebody's head, which we usually don't, then we take what's going on inside our head and we put it inside their head. And and that's projection. Or with assumption, what we do is we take what culture has taught us that means and we assume that that is true, right? So we're taking information that we have that seems like it might be applicable and we're using that to fill in gaps in our information. And then we're using that to make our decisions or our thoughts or our opinions, And this is a very dangerous, dangerous thing to do because it leads to a lot of error and it leads to some very dangerous sort of things that way in terms of personal relationships. Because when this happens, it tends to make the other person that's having this done to them feel alienated, misunderstood rejected out of cause, right? Or with no cause. This can be very damaging to relationship. So the challenge then is to train ourselves to recognize when we do not know. Because again, our habit, our our nature, our instinct, as it were, is to try to fill in those gaps as best we can using what information we do have. And then we'll model things off of ourselves or off of portrayals that we've seen. We conflate people and try to make them be the same. Again, that's assumption, right? Having been on the receiving end of feeling like this, uh, of, of what feels like projection, it makes you feel devalued as a person when this happens to you. And it's really, really hard, too, because I've definitely been on the other end of it where I've done projection, I've done assumption about other people. It's really hard to realize that that's what you're doing or to come to the conclusion that your conclusions may be wrong and being open to that fact of trying to... Because often what happens with this is we kind of assume the worst And other people, particularly when this comes from a judgmental place, we tend to assume the worst of the person that we're projecting onto. They do something that we think isn't great behavior, and we want to know why they did something we think is poor behavior. And we try to think of what motivation could be there for that. And so we we fill in, oh, if I were doing that, here's why I would do it, right? We fill in our own sort of... um, hypothetical motivations for why we would have done the thing that they did that we think was a bad thing to do. And then we kind of assume the worst of them because we're judging not them, but ourselves, right? You see, see what's happening there. It's because we're taking, oh, here's how I would end up doing this terrible thing. And then we judge ourselves because we're judging the motivations that we assigned to them, not who they actually are or what their actual reasons are. Now, it might be that their actual reasons or motivations are what we project or assume, but that's not a foregone conclusion. It's very possible that that's not the case. And then this can lead to the whole not believing them problem as well, where you get so attached to your own assumption or projection that you don't believe that their motivations that they state is real. You might think that your assumptions slash projection is more realistic because of course it seems more realistic you came up with it right and this is where our brains are tricking us into assigning more value to our own thoughts and opinions than to those of others now it certainly is possible for people to lie that's always true but we have to be careful at the same time to not 
deceive ourselves to not automatically think that we're always right because that can happen. And again, we're filling in information gaps. Do we allow those gaps to be filled in with actual information or are we just going to keep the spot full with placeholder info that we ourselves conjured? So I think that's most of what I want to say about this particular topic. I think it's a challenging one. It's not necessarily something that necessarily has to have a lot said about it, but rather to pay attention, to pay attention to your own self, your own thoughts, self-analyze as you're looking at somebody else and you're saying, oh, I bet they did this because of X. When you start using that sort of um, that sort of language, oh, I think they did it because of this, or I bet they did it because of that, things along those lines, that's, that's a sign that you're probably going into sort of a judgmental projection or assumption sort of territory. Now, we can also do other things with projection where, like, let's say we like a particular color, so we, you know, get a gift for somebody of that particular, in that particular color, even if they would prefer a different color, right? That sort of thing happens as well. And this is a less malevolent, I suppose, form of the same problem where we make assumptions or project. Often, often this is projection when it, it's coming from a, a, not necessarily a benevolent place per se, but usually it's a... I'm trying to do a thing to make you happy, so I'm going to do the thing that would make me happy sort of place. This is a a sort of projection as well. We're not getting something or doing something to make the other person happy. We're doing it to make our mental picture of them happy, and that mental picture happens to be very heavily based on ourselves. So this is another area where especially projection tends to become extremely dangerous. Now, we can make a, a lot of assumptions in these areas too, saying oh, that person seems like this stereotype. Therefore, I think they're going to like things stereotype likes. And maybe they do, maybe they don't, but you don't know, right? And this is, again, it's trying to fill in for a lack of information. And that's really, to just to, to wrap this up, look for when you are making guesses where you're filling in information about others based on nothing but conjecture especially conjecture and speculation that doesn't have any sort of base to it. Be especially, especially careful when you're making judgments and pronouncements based off of this. It's a difficult task. It's definitely been something that I struggle with. And I'm getting better at it. I've gotten better at catching when I'm assuming, when I'm projecting. But I have a ways to go as well. And we all do. Thank you for listening, everyone. If you ever want to contact me, you can email me at cntier at gmail.com. I'd appreciate your support. If you could uh, like me on Facebook, facebook.com slash ramblers, or a financial contribution is also greatly appreciated, you can support me financially at patreon.com slash Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.